Welcome to chapter 24. Um, today we're going to talk about welding codes and standards. And for, for a welder on the shop floor, a work, good working knowledge of welding codes and standards will really set you apart from the average welder. Um, you won't believe how many welders, designers, even engineers think they know what the code says. And that can be very, very expensive and even dangerous when it turns out they're wrong. Um, in this lesson, we'll try to explain the, the major code bodies, their purposes, the, the differences and similarities between them, and kind of cover just sort of 50,000 foot view how well the codes and standards work, and, and the big things how WPSs and PQRs work. So, so first off, what is a code? Um, codes are a list of rules specific to an industry that dictate how stuff gets, stuff gets built. Um, in, in my world, which is, which is AWS code, uh, D11, AWS D11 is structural. I worked out at D115 for a long time, which was the rail code. Um, D1.6 is structural stainless steel. They've got a code for pretty much everything. Um, and the, the whole purpose of a code is it creates consistency. Consistency from welder to welder in a shop, shop to shop in a business, um, business to business in a country, and then country to country across the world because we're all working out of the same rule book. The welds that, you know, guys producing in England to AWS D11 code are just as, as two code as mine are if I'm working from that same code using the same resources. So, so it's really about consistency and safety. It's so that everybody's doing the same thing every time, and that's where codes come in. So for us, there's three major code bodies we're going to deal with. There's the AWS, AWS, which is the uh, American Wealth Society. There's going to be ASME, ASME. The American Society of Mechanical Engineers, and there is going to be API, and that is the American Petroleum Institution. So. AWS, um, they've got a code for pretty much everything. Their, their main focus is really structural though. Uh, they're the ones that do structural building codes, they've got the new seismic code that is in place throughout the entire state of California. Um, pretty much if it's a building or a bridge or anything like that, AWS is going to fall under the AWS's banner. Um, ASME, they are much more into pipe, pressure vessels and stuff like that. Um, Boiler code is they, they all run out of ASME. Um, pressure valves they all run out of ASME. So it's 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 still welding. It's just kind of a different variety. And then API the American Petroleum Institute. Take a guess what they do? Oil and gas piping. They're, that's their major major focus. Now, having said all that, there's there's overlap in all these codes. Pretty much all these bodies use the AWS classifications for filler metal and all the research they've done um, on welding. They, they use all that stuff. AWS, um, they really don't, I hate to say they don't recognize the people's stuff. They try to be all, they, they try to take it all into themselves, but um, API, they use both of these. They use ASME stuff, they use AWS stuff. Um, ASME, they're another one that tries to, tries to do everything themselves, so they don't take in a lot of other piece, people's stuff, but they, but other people use a lot of their stuff. Um, API is kind of a funny code. It's these two, just AWS structural code is 650 pages. Um, the whole set of ASME you need to take the, the like the certified welder inspector's exam, it's literally a stack of books this big for ASME. API is like that thick. It's a it's a really cool code. It's kind of a get or done code. Um, it's five guys go figure. But it's a cool code, very different from the other two, and they, they've all got their plus and minuses. The, the ASME is incredibly detailed, a huge resource. API, like I said, is get her done, and AWS is somewhere in the middle. Um, one cool thing is, is a certified welding inspector, which I am, um, can certify you to any of these codes, as long as we've got the proper resources. Um, ASME allows AWS CWIs to um, certify their codes, as does API 1104, so that works out pretty well. So, um, 
Let's talk about qualification versus certification. It sounds like a distinction without a difference, but there is a difference. So, qualification is the act of welding the requisite tests um, and passing the required non-destructive or destructive tests to, to, to a standard, to a, not necessarily a code standard, but to a standard. And, and my example of that is, you go to take a weld test somewhere. You're not, you may not be taking an ABS certification test, but you're taking their qualification test. If you go to big tech trailers, um, their welding test will qualify you to weld at big tech trailers. You are performing the act, you're doing the welding, you're passing whatever inspection they do, you are qualified to weld at big tech trailers or western trailers or motive power or wherever. Um, certification is a very different thing. Certification is doing that work, whatever work it is, to a code standard, a, a, a standard body's code, um, and then having a CWI certify all of that is correct and actually signing their name on the paperwork. So the qualification is doing the test, the certification is doing it to a, to a code and then having the CWI expect it to a code and putting a stamp on it. That's the difference. Um, now like I said, even places that don't work to, a, to code still qualify their welders. Um, there's not a weld shop I've ever heard of that will just bring you in, give you a welder and let you build product for them. You've got to pass a test at every place you're going to go. And that test is actually the actual qualification for that place. So let's talk the big ticket item. If you thought this stuff was boring, just wait. So now we're going to talk about welding procedures and um, PQRs. So throughout the course of our program, you're going to be producing welding procedures for us. And the reason for that is, in my opinion, most welders are incredibly ignorant of how welding procedures work and what they actually do. So a welding procedure, WPS, is a welding procedure, C-E-E-D-U-R-E, -E -E specification. And that is a recipe for a weld. That's very true. It gives you your amps, your volts, your what, what filler money you need, all the ingredients, right? Um, but how do we know that whatever recipe we're making, how do we know that tastes good or not? Well, we do that with the PQR, and that happens before we actually write WPS. So a PQR is a procedure qualification record. We're not aboard. So this PQR ensures that whatever recipe we've got up here actually tastes good. Okay? And, and what happens is, how, how this works is, let's say I'm trying to join two materials that I haven't joined before. Let's say I'm trying to weld um, Domex 100W Domex to um, A572 radiator. Now, that's been done a hundred times. There's codes out there, there's procedures out there for it. Let's say I've never done it, and I want to prove that it works so I can sell these products. So how that works, I make a PQR. And what that PQR looks just like a welding procedure, I write in all the variables I'm going to use. I'm going to use this wire, I'm going to set the machine like this, I'm going to travel this fast, I'm going to do all these things, use this gas. Then after I get done with, I produce a weld test, pretty similar to an, an AWS weld test. And it is an AWS weld test, it's just it's on a bigger scale. Instead of a five or a six inch test, we might do one that's a foot long, something like that. And from this big PQR weldment, got my plates, I got my weld. I'm going to, usually first thing I'm gonna do is x-ray or ultrasound it to make sure that it's even worth doing the rest of the work to. And then I'm going to um, cut a couple of vent test specimens out of it. And the code book tells you tells you all this stuff. I'm gonna cut, cut a couple of vent test specimens out of Vendum, and I'm gonna cut a couple of tensile specimens out and send them off to the lab to get pulled. And the whole purpose of this is to show that my water procedure, the recipe I've got, makes this metal at least as good as the base metal. I didn't make it any weaker by welding on it. Ideally, when we bend these, they bend fine. When they pull these stencils, they pull stronger than the base metal. And if that's the case, 
um, my PQR pass. And I can take the information within that PQR, transfer it into WPS form, and I'm good to go. I can give that WPS to my welders, they can weld, they can weld on no problem. So what happens if I do all this work in the PQR, I make my recipe, I do this, and these things, they break like glass. Well, what, what do I do then? Well, I remake my PQR with different values. And I keep doing that until I get one that works. And once I have one that works, then it turns into my welding procedure. Um, you can't have a welding procedure without a PQR to back it up. That, that just doesn't work. So what we're having you do in the lab, you're not actually making welding procedures. You're just practicing making welding procedures to keep track of your settings and to get familiar with the format. Um, they're not actually legal welding procedures because we, we haven't done this work here to back them up. So you may ask, well, how do we test in the lab if we don't have welding procedures? Oh, we got welding procedures. You don't worry about that. We got them. Um, and we'll give them to you when you get ready to test. We've got books full of them. But for what you're doing, you're just practicing. Um, so being familiar, as guys to wrap this up, being familiar and confident with welding procedures is, is absolutely critical. Um, you will really set yourself apart from the average welder. When you pick up a welding procedure and you don't look at it, you know, going cross-eyed, your eyes bugging out of your head because you've never seen this information before. It's a recipe for a weld, that's all it is. And if, you, if you're confident with them, it's, you know, it's, it's easy. It's like, oh yeah, I, I run this wire, I set my machine in this range, how much gas do I run? Oh, it says right here, I run this gas and I run this much of it. It's easy. They're there to make your life simpler and to make the product you're welding reliable. Just imagine if you went into a welding shop and every welder there was welding in a different way. That's not a very consistent product. That's not what people want. They want a, a product that is all the same and how they get there is through welding procedures. So anyway, if you have any questions about this stuff, find me in the lab, find me online, and I'll ask you the best I can. Thanks.